Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh man, we're going to court everybody, and we got kind of a bombshell dropped on us last time. We learned that <laughs> Sheriff Bambina was the guy who uh, wiped the blood stain away, most likely. Because his fingerprint is on that bloodstain, so... I still don't know if it relates at all, though. It's probably got to in some way. In some way! February 24th, 9.41am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all... The victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. And a different suspect was arrested at the other crime scene. Lana! Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. Oh, wow. She looks good for an all-nighter. So, how'd it go? It says Mr. Wright suspects. The police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. Oh. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? We agreed that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous, or yeah, simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I am as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Skye? Hmm? We discovered traces left by a certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. You found Officer Marshall's... traces? Blood-stained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Scott? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Oh boy. February 24th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 9. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Vanna Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is... Hmm. Hmm? I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach criminal affairs from the prosecutor's office. The victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain in both places at the same time. But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow. This is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what set Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what go he's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Well, it's more so than you, Phoenix. Phoenix is just like, um, I messed this up five different times, but I'm still going to keep going. Well, what's better, to be like, oh, I don't know this, or be like, oh, I totally know this, even though you don't. I would Phoenix prefer the also first does one. that, though, because we have many different timelines that we're playing. <laughs> Very well, let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For its first witness, the prosecution calls... The suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. So, in other words... The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Yep. Oh, boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir! I am Officer Mike Meekin, sir! My occupation is, um... That would be murder, sir! What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're telling us you're a professional killer? Sir! It was me, sir! I'm the one who did it! I'll never kill anyone again, sir! You've got to believe me, sir! What? Uh, 
actually what we'd like to hear from you is, Sir, well, I am what you would call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me, sir. Officer Meekins. Y yes sir Give us your report of the crime. Consider that an order. Yes, sir! As you wish! After all, I am a part of the generation that must be told what to do, sir! Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> oh boy. Witness testimony. Crime report! Sir! <laughs> <laughs> Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted a suspicious man in the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked! I fought for my life! Then I... I did it! After that, I passed out. Until another officer smacked me awake. I mean, if it is his job, that sort of makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you? Do unto others before they do unto you! <laughs> That's the Beacon's family motto, sir. I see. Then you fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness. Yes, sir! He knocked me upside the head, sir! Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Uh... What I need here is more info to work with. That's pretty much what he told us. Yep. Crime report, sir! <laughs> this is great. I love some some of the, uh... Some of the wit uh, witness testimonies have hilarious names. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir! I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir! Yikes! Now there's a scary thought. <laughs> Evidence transfer was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant that many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir! The Blue Badger? Yes, sir! The lovely police mascot created by the head detective, sir! I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transfer process! That was my sole mission for the day, sir! Why was he in there, then? I see. Sounds like a very, uh, important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were so many people running around that I relocated the Bull Badger to the evidence room! Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen! I rushed into the room! In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir! I have one right here around my neck! So then, your ID number should be listed in here, right? There it is! I found it! This is the one right here! Could you please read us the number? Yes, sir! It's 4989596! That's my number, sir! I see. Huh? But the number 4989596 is shown as being used twice. Please explain, witness. It's the no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated Blue Badger to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir. That was when I spotted the man on the security screen. Data added okay. to the ID card record. That makes more sense now. And it's like 20 minutes in between, so that kind of makes sense too. Yeah. So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir! A knife! Detective Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you. What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. Wow, Phoenix! That's what I reacted, sir! I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him! That's how I got this gash on my hand! Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked! I grabbed the man by his collar! Then he fought for his life, then he did it. What exactly do you mean when you say you did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir! <laughs> the man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him! took his knife? I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver! I made sure to close my eyes like a man! I, uh, see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood, and then... Then, the next thing I knew... Yes. HE PUSHED ME RIGHT IN MY FACE, SIR! 
After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. So, no, he didn't murder him. Right. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious! <laughs> oh. Right. According to the report from the, the officer that woke him up at the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too! So that would've been 15 I woke up crying tears of pain! That's nice. Er, I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. <laughs> wow. Wait a second, wait, hang on a second, I need to check something. So the ID record record, so he went in at 5... Oh! And he recovered at 5.15 or 5.30? 5.30. Okay. Generally, if you're unconscious for more than a minute, you're gonna suffer some, like, brain damage from that. Well, it, it said that's when he entered. The battle may have lasted for, like, five to ten minutes or something. No, it lasted, it. it lasted for, like, a few seconds. Okay. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir! I mean, I, I don't blame him for that, because Hollywood in general is like, Oh yeah, you'd be a knocked out unconscious for a good day, and you'll be fine. It's like, no, that, that's not what happens. Your mission? Yes, sir! The Blue Badger, sir! I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand! Well, we can all rest easy now. <laughs> I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um... Yes, Officer Meekins? With regard to that, sir... Take a look at this! It was sent to my cell! Chief Gant delivered it to me just this morning, sir! The Chief... delivered it? What is that? A videotape? Yes, sir! That's absolutely right, sir! A videotape, sir! It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room! What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape, and was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. That's the only thing I'm really good at. Yeah, gants up to something. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. I think Gant just doesn't trust Edgeworth, basically. No, I think he's up to something. Alright, fair enough. Well, We then... tried to get it as well. No, we didn't. We were going to the computer, but then Bambina came. Well, yeah, obviously he's not going to let some guy just take the security tapes. Duh. Well then, let's have a look! Show us the video of you murdering the victim! Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir! It scares me! A video of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? So yeah, we actually get a video of the murder. Whoa! In 3D! Oh yeah. Okay, this is already getting creepy. Oh, well, there's someone walking in. So that's Goodman. Hey, this looks pretty good. Yeah, nice job on the 3D. No, it's gonna turn away and then it's gonna come back. Are you kidding me? Yup. <laughs> Knew it. Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? What the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? Sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department, sir! It's the Blue Badger, sir! Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Security phone video added to the court record. Yes, well, anyway, this tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter, er, uh, someone in the evidence room, and some sort of, er, uh, activity did take place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that alright with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir! As you wish, sir! I love how Meekins is, like, testifying as to why he's the murderer. This is, like, really weird. Who in his testimony, Mystery Man? His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened his locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must be him! No one else could have unlocked it! Unless what? someone has all the fingerprints. 
What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have had to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this is cross-examination will lead. But everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. Yeah, well, I have a feeling we'll be watching the video quite a bit. You kind of have to in this game. Okay. Tell me, were you able to get a good look at him? At the face of the man who attacked you with the knife? D Sir, if I, uh, you must label people as having been seen or not seen uh, the man's face. I believe I would be classified as the latter. The latter? But you were standing right in front of him, were you not? More to the point, you are the person who fought him, aren't you? Oh, yes, sir, but I didn't get a clear look at his face, sir. I'm not the kind of guy who looks directly at people when talking with them, you that's see. That's true, he's looking to the side. Yeah, that's a good trait for a police officer. <laughs> Still, I'm sure it was him! I bet my badge on it! But there were, there's no question that he was had a good But you don't know that for sure, do you? You never actually saw Detective Goodman's face. Well, I suppose you might say that. That is, if you must label people as having seen or not seen it. Since his face can't be identified in the video, only you can verify it. W w why is everyone looking at me? If I had to label your stares as disturbing or... Meekins... Yeah! Oh my gosh. Having been shown a questionable video at best, we are not in the best of moods. Now please be more certain when you testify. Y yes sir! You claim the man who brandished a knife on you was Bruce Goodman. Tell us why you are positive it was him. You open the locker, which requires Goodman's fingerprint to be- I think someone stole his fingerprint. You can't! It's literally attached to your finger. No, but like- You can't- No, you... you can't take a print- Like, you can't be like, take a print of somebody and then use that to open the locker. It doesn't work like that. You can do the... Games. Yeah. Th those aren't accurate. About these lockers, is there no other way to open them? No, sir! I myself tried all kinds of methods in the past! They only respond to registered fingerprints, sir! I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. <laughs> if the man opened the locker's lock, which only responds to its registered fingerprints, then he must be the person the locker was assigned to. EXACTLY MY PART, SIR! AND THIS TOO! The locker he opened is unquestionably Goodman's locker. How do you know that information? I've heard rumors, sir! From people in the know, sir! People in the know? The workers in the department cafeteria, sir! They keep me informed! They also listen to my romantic troubles, sir! Great! For the record, the opened locker did indeed belong to Detective Goodman. I verified this information through a more reliable source. Hmm... So the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint? However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. S sir If I may say something, sir. Please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify to enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is... Unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Light! Let's check the court record again! Is there a problem with the security photo or video? I mean, it moved. A freaking ton. Move back and forth. Wait, what's military time? Go back. Military time? It's the same time. Okay. 12 plus 5 is 17. Right, look, let's look closely at the part where he's opening the locker, shall we? Uh huh. Something fell out. Indeed. That looked like the glove that fell out that we found, like beneath it. Oh. Too bad we can't pause it. Also, there's a light on the 
super There was a light on above it? Yeah. The other ones didn't have it on. And a light indicates open boxes. That's a problem. Yep. Let's <laughs> say no problem. The tape was provided by the police department, so there's no problem with it. I admire your trust in the police department, Mr. Wright. But if you ask me, I think there's a problem with what's shown on the tape. Rather than with the actual tape itself. This all sounds true enough, but the victim's body was found at the prosecutor's office. There has to be a mistake somewhere. The real thing's so much more intense than in the movies. Here, you can use the player to watch it as much as you'd like. A security video? Maybe I should take another look at the footage. Wait, what? That was the wrong one. My bad. Regarding the video contained on this tape, there is one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that... The man may not be Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? Interesting. Your Honor, I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? I propose we have the defense point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. We gotcha. He would want me to point it out. Very well, proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video? This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. We're gonna do the wrong thing. Please don't play it too many times! I, I can't stand watching this video! It's like, if you play it more than five times, Mr. like Meekins will drop dead. How did this guy ever become a police officer? <laughs> now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man may not be Detective Goodman? Are we gonna go for the light, then? Yeah. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins? Sir! D do you mean me, sir? As I understand it, the locker apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If the match pr print matches then the, the registered data, then the lock turns on and the lock is released. Or the light turns on and the lock is released. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. <laughs> the Blue Badger is weird. But it's got a good song. I'm not a huge fan of the song. When the victim reaches for the handle to open the door... Let's rewind to a little earlier. Amazingly, the game is really not lagging at the video part. Amazingly, the music is playing still the same way, even though it's in reverse. <laughs> yep. Here, notice the light. What's this? It's already lit! Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. Are you trying to choke yourself? <laughs> Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know! It must have broken down! Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. Oh well. It just goes to show novices should keep their mouth shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes, why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor? <laughs> yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um... Maybe something like jammed the electronic system? Something jammed the sensor? Say, there's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too! There's got to be another clue somewhere in this footage. 
It's the thing that fell out of the locker! Yeah, you found both of those things really quickly. Very well, let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked. Mr. Wright, please point out the cause for this. You got it. Do, 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 do. It's the blue mattress! <laughs> The thing that's strange about this video would have to be, uh, this. Hold on a second, I need to use my eye drops. Well, I don't get it. Um, would you mind if I borrowed your eye medicine? Don't look at me with those bleary eyes! Before your eyes get too teary, perhaps you should think this through again, hmm? Very well, let's inspect the video once more. Wow. Also, it's nice as if you click on the screen, it'll automatically... Pause it, Pause. that's nice. I want to know how they programmed, like, examining the stuff in the video, because it works really well. Mm -hmm. Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. Now it's just silent. Okay, if I was hanging out, if I was hanging out in a room with, like, an electronic machine, that'd freak me out. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir! It's been my experience that fiends fall out when doors are opened. I often fall out and roll great distances when I open my car door, sir. <laughs> we can't be sure that item was in the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In inserted? The swagger. <laughs> He's like, mm, mm. Yeah, someone, practicing for the whoever, disco rave tonight. Whoever this person is has got some swagger. The white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me. But the object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical circuits. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But at the crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But, but, s sir! By insulator, you don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant element evidence? The relevant elements. The relevant elements? What was the insulator stuck between the, the locker door? Behold, this was stuck in the locker door! <laughs> How about sticking your finger in instead? Huh? You are rather thin, it just might oh fit. Oh my gosh. I think my own current's just been blocked. Instead of being sarcastic, why don't you think this through again? Something thin enough to slip in the door, yet not conductive to electricity. You gotta think about chemistry here, what's- oh. It's the rubber glove. I found this near the locker, a thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that it was in the victim's locker. It has a tag that says SL9 incident. The video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't the case, the lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is that not so, Officer Meekins? Sir! It would appear so, sir! He, like, tilts to the side of these things. Yeah. Kind of cool. Or, or, order! So are we to believe, then, that the victim whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility, and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What?! Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir! M me sir I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Wrong two used. He is dumb. Oh, oh! You mean that, sir! Uh, of course, sir! Is this a joke? Someone was prepped. Very well, begin your testimony. To be fair though, I think I would prep Meekins even if I was <laughs> oh, yeah. trying to Oh yeah, like, okay, he you needs need to calm he needs down. Prep. Mystery man number two. You need some water. There's one other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. You could At the time it. of the crime, the detective had used his card. 
but the card ended up at the car. That is true. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. Someone could have just stolen it. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. I think se Lucky 7 is Gant. You think so? I think so. Just before the crime, hmm? Yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference. <laughs> <laughs> there were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared up by noon. Right. I see. Now, let us move on to the cross-examination. <laughs> you really, really suspect Gant, don't you? I just think he's evil. <laughs> you, he's just, you, just evil. He, you just think he creeps you out, basically. He, no, okay. Von Karma was like really obnoxious and annoying, and I was like, okay, this dude, it has to be related somehow, I don't know, somehow. And that made sense. Gant, I'm like, I don't know anything about you, but he would also totally be the person who's like, my, like, ID number, can I have all sevens? <laughs> <laughs> that could totally be him. It's, yeah, it's possible. I don't know. I, I just, I have this feeling. Okay. So, unlike your earlier testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? Yes, sir! Solid as stone, sir! If my hand wasn't strapped in bandages, I'd even give the V for victory sign, sir! Couldn't you just use his right hand for that? Let's hear him out. The witness can't afford to make any more mistakes. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Is that card hanging from your neck one of these ID cards? Yes, sir! This card right next to my cuffs, sir! I keep it here so I won't ever forget it. But what if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out in the open like that? Maybe I shouldn't wear it around my neck. Remember when I said two out of three times my tie gets stuck in my car door when I get out? Well, the remaining time my ID card gets stuck! Instead of the door closing, my ID card chokes me! <laughs> Maybe I should just leave this one alone. <laughs> Poor Meekins. <Yeah. laughs> At any rate, each police officer only has one ID card. Everyone has that one clumsy friend that just somehow, like, destroys everything. Who, like, breaks their leg every yeah, week. Yeah, we call, I have a friend like that at college. <laughs> or, like, just breaks. It's like, oh, I accidentally shattered your glass bowl. Sorry. Or, like, bumps their head into the ceiling mm -hmm. fan and stuff. Both the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Please proceed with your testimony. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it! Let it be noted that this is the record the witness referred to. Let me see. Yes, that would be it. Detective Goodman. What's the matter? Uh, according to this, Mr. Edgeworth, your name is on here! So it is, Your Honor. Not that prosecutor again! Hey, maybe he's behind all this. Being a prosecutor, he could hide the evidence! Mommy, is that man in a blue motor? Shh, don't stare at him. <laughs> You've got the wrong color, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it would seem the inquiry committee will want to speak with you again today. I have nothing to be ashamed of regarding my actions or their consequences. Who brought their kid to court? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who's like, Mommy, I want to go to the court case. <laughs> okay, sweetie. I don't think that'll be a problem. <laughs> it's even though it's a murder case. For now, let us continue with the cross-examination. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. It must be so difficult for him. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. Okay. I don't see it. Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show you his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir! He didn't show me any ID card, sir! Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do was show it to you. Aha! Uh -huh! I think I know it. All he had to do was show it to you. <laughs> That's great. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. I think what? I know what it is then. What? If he didn't show his car, if he didn't have the card altogether, it would have to be someone who could just get in and be like, all right, well, I can, like, sneak in here. It would have to be Bambina. <laughs> it, no, because he could just walk in and be like, all right, I can do this. Or it could be um, Lunchbox Gal. 
Except she was at the underground parking lot at she the was. exact time this was happening. Okay, then they're in cahoots. <laughs> Once you okay, Angel Star has not done anything except commit perjury on the stand. No, which is but I'm big saying, I'm saying evil. like she's okay. They're trying to take out prosecutors. Oh, you think, think there's a conspiracy? I think there's like a conspiracy thing, and she's like, okay, I'm a witness here for this thing, and you're gonna like frame um this person over here so we can just take out everyone like in the high ups. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, that's so is. Gant, do you think spearheading that? No, I think he's just doing his own thing. Oh. I don't know. That I have many theories. Right. M maybe he just panicked! Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is too far off. It's far too obvious. It's not like Edgeworth to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we've got. So you think that someone stole his ID card? No, I think someone just didn't use an ID card at all and was able to sneak in because they have access to the computers. But there's no way to present that. You can't. You literally need an ID card in order to get through the door. And if you think it's Jake Marshall who did that, he's not good with machines, keep in mind. You could be just saying that, though. I suppose. So, alright, which one do you want to do it on? I don't know. And also, I don't know what evidence we would present to point out that it, like, someone could have bypassed that. Mm -hmm. I guess we should take a look at the evidence, then. Mm -hmm. so this is page one. You've got Goodman's ID here. It was found at the prosecutor's office. ID card record. There's Goodman, Miles. Does Miles have his ID card on him? He w he had to have. Well, maybe someone took his. Edgeworth's? Yeah. No, Edgeworth already said he got the screwdriver. What about the screwdriver? You could undo the machine. I don't think it works like that. I don't know. Are you just stumped? I'm sure later on I'm gonna be like, oh, you're an idiot. Just think about it. Uh, I need to figure out which one to present it on first. It's this one, I'll just say. Okay. At the time of the crime. That could make sense. Alright, so we've got the security video. Let's just go for them one by one. Sure. Uh, Marshall's Prince. Okay. The Unstable Jar. Okay. The evidence locker. Right. Rubber glove. Okay. Evidence room floor plans. Let me see oh yeah, that. and if we check it, yeah, it's marked where the blood is. See? Okay. Goodman's lost item report. Oh, I wonder if the lost item was the pot. Was the pot? Yeah. What else? Screwdriver. So Edgeworth did he has admitted he went to the evidence room to get this, because Gant asked him to. Fingerprinting set. ID card report. Testing fluid. Oh, Switchblade yeah. knife. Victim shoe. Crime photo at the underground park. Yeah, now we're at the parking lot. Evidence. I don't know. Wait. Blue badger. Okay. No. Nope. Okay. I don't know. Do you give up then? Yeah. Alright. Oh, I would never guess that. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. Uh, I'm not good at waiting, sir! I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honor, 
I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. Uh, lost item report? It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. I thought it was the clock. Let me guess, you believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Okay. Order! Order! So now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order! 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 Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. B Bravo? Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15pm on the day of the crime, the man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the underground in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Well, yeah. Uh, th that is... Well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't good. Well, well, it seems you finally realized exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place at the police department at 5.15 on the day of the crime. So... So the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The murderer being Miss Lana Skye, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness observed the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Um... Angel Star was not trustworthy. She lied like twenty times on the stand, mm -hmm. and was established like the uh, like the judge was like, "Well, she definitely has a grudge, so we can't accept her testimony until also, she gave him a lunch." Also, Edgeworth looks like a monkey there. If you look at his nose for too long, I think you're just seeing things. Ah! <laughs> Phoenix can't unsee it. He's oh, oh, like, oh, also like a, a monkey. monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright! You have to do something or else Lana... What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Object, wait and see what happens. I mean, you have to object, otherwise they'll be like, well, we're done. <laughs> yeah. I better pace myself. If I rush ahead, I might run into another trap. But Mr. White, if you won't do anything... It seems the defense is out of ammunition. The surrender flag has been raised. Your Honor, may we have your ruling now? Don't give up yet, Mr. Wright. Get up and fight. <laughs> that right. wasn't worth it. One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. Where did he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he come from, Cotton Eye Joe? That's right. And I'm eating my hot lava. What the? What? I think I might have seen something. What?
I would need to see the video again. Oh. Uh, we can do that now. Just fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have the fast forward feature. I'll forget that. Alright, I'll look later then. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Oh, yeah, okay, then I, I was just seeing things. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh, whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place at the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have to testify. What is his or her name? <gasps> we can pick whoever the heck we want? Yeah. Wait, but I want to pick someone else. Good man. Okay, who do you want to pick? I mean, we have Dan. to try... <laughs> I want last guy! Um... Okay. Can, we, really try, can we try all of these? Um, I'm pretty sure it's like there's the one right option, the rest just have the same thing. But I'll make a safe state here. I would say either do... Actually, wait, I don't have to. I would say either do Gant or Emma or the actual one. Or Bruce Goodman. <laughs> Let's try Bruce Goodman first. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I'm not even going to bother asking you why. I've never seen a more obvious stall tactic in my entire career. Mr. Wright, don't you remember what you said this morning? You know, about your trump card? You fire. That's right, those bloody fingerprints we found in the evidence room. Now's my chance to bring him in to testify. Okay, let's try. Alright. That's the only. Th I think that's just what it does. For it? Yeah. Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let him know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Alright. Very well. The court will take a 30 minute recess while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is in recess. Yeah, let's go out on the swings. It don't mean a fiend if it ain't got that swing. February 24th, 11.32 a.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured everything out. Uh, I haven't figured anything out. Lana. You're the one who knows everything! Emma. You always should know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Hope I'm not interrupting any <laughs> pals! Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective runner all around while on duty. And to top it all off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals! Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey! 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 I didn't see you there, Miss Sky. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh! Oh! Okay. You made this, right? My apologies, Detective. Due to present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. Could I bother you to bring me the SL9 incident files? I'll need them by noon. 
Talk about crazy. The SL9 incident. But Lana, that's... Look at that stack! Holy cow! I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read them. I can't believe you, the chief prosecutor, were a witness in that case. Miss Skye was a witness? Received the file of the SL9 incident. Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with serial murders. Let's take a look see, shall we? Files for the Dark Killings solved Dark. two. Let's see. Incident number SL9 closed. Criminal Joe Dark crime serial murder sentence death. Victims Edward Jones, Jason Knight, Edith Kirby. Kirby! He, he killed Kirby! <laughs> He's the worst! Rachel Moss, Jeb Bates, yeah! and Neil Marshall. Yeah! Trial data Head Prosecutor Miles Edgeriff, Witnesses Lana Sky and Emma Sky. Yeah, it's probably like their parents or something. Investigation Task Force. Executive Investigators Damon Gant, Lana Sky, Head Investigator Bruce Goodman, Other Investigators Jake Marshall, and Angel Star. It's like all the same people. Yep. Oh, what? Now that I brought you your stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? Uh, Emma? But why? Why is your name in here? What? My name's in there? I don't know. Unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana! This SL9 incident, is that... That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Dark Killings. The Joe Dark... No. No, Lana! That's over with! No! Emma, wait! She ran away. Oh, I thought she just passed out. Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, pal, but I'm out of here. Great. Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Damon Gant, Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I better take a good look at this file. We already did! We're all good! To be continued. Oh yeah. This is where the game really gets good. Alright, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Next time, we're gonna be cross-examining Jake Marshall. <laughs> we'll be going to Texas, everybody. Oh yeah. Everybody, it, that'll everybody. be exciting, and that's where we're guns. gonna we're gonna learn a bit No d no don't, don't do that. Don't bring your guns. Keep your guns in a place where only you can get them. But if you're... You know what? I should probably just stop talking. <laughs> Anyhow, have a great day, and God bless.